Hello everybody. This uh, quick tutorial is meant to help you shrink down those massive projects in Unreal that you have and get them ready to go up onto GitHub and to do it properly in case you have files that are over a hundred megs and you're getting that fateful error when you try to upload to GitHub um, using a tool called GitLFS. And we're looking at how to get that installed on a Mac. It's not so hard on a PC, uh, but it's a little bit tricky on a Mac. So we're gonna go through those steps. Uh, but first, I just want to say I've got this folder over here, 36 gigs. Wow, that's huge. Um, I want to pare this down, and I've got a bunch of stuff here from the marketplace. And to do this, I need to migrate it over to a new project. Here I'm going to just set up a brand new project. And just to be mindful, I want to make sure that it's a blank project. And I want it with no starter content because that's going to bring over some stuff. Uh, if there is starter content in my major project, then I, it'll come over a, as I do the migration. And I'm just going to call this major project and put this somewhere I can get to easily on my machine in my Unreal folder. And it's getting built up over here. And when I create it, it's going to have absolutely nothing in it. And that's great. And as soon as it launches, I'm literally just going to quit it because I don't need it. And then over here in my massive project, I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to select the level that I need to migrate over into this other project. And the really beautiful thing about a migration, uh, if you do it properly, um, it's going to only bring over the files that are in use on the level. So it's only going to bring the geometry and textures. Now this is the, this is the level that I'm going to want to submit uh, up to GitHub. So all I have to do is right click on it. And under, under Asset Actions, I just pick Migrate. It will give me this nice list of the stuff that's in use, including one file in here that's going to be a problem in a minute. We're going to talk about that. Um, because it's over 100 megs and GitHub does not like that. So I'm going to carefully go over to my major project folder and just highlight content. That's going to be the target for the migration. And the copy is going to be complete. You need to go on over and search for yourself. You've got to get up to GitHub. And you need to set up uh, an account there. If you want to, you can just grab Git Desktop for Mac, and that's really simple to download over on the Google for Git LFS. And there are some easy to follow instructions. Um, if you just search for installing Git large file storage uh, for Mac, um, this is what we're looking at here specifically. Um, and it uses a tool to install uh, something that's not on your Mac by default. Uh, it's an installer called Homebrew. And it's, they call it the missing package manager. And it's really, really easy to use. Um, but we need to install this first. And I'm just going to highlight this, that they give us this nice command. And I just copy it to my clipboard. Holding down command and space to get up my spotlight search, I'm just going to type in terminal to launch terminal. And this is where we can do a lot of heavy lifting on our computer, including installing software. So I'm just going to paste that down. There we go. The script will install brew, press return to continue. I've already got it installed from earlier. Uh, so it's just going to overwrite what I have. And you'll see that it's downloading it and it installs it really, really quickly. Then in the meantime, I'm just going to poke my nose over here to GitHub uh, LFS and take a look at that. And you're going to find, if you're on a PC, that there's a really nice executable that will just go on your computer and it's really simple. Uh, but for Mac users, you're going to have to run this on the command line once you have Homebrew installed. Um, so you just grab this command copy it and once homebrew has done its job on the terminal and you'll know it has because you can see your username has popped up and you got this gray box i'm just going to paste that down i have it installed already uh, so you'll see it's got a warning it's already installed but you'll just 
very quickly download it and you will get um, Git LFS now installed to your computer. And Git LFS is intended for large file storage to overcome the error of having a 100 megabyte file trying to go up to uh, GitHub. Now that we have that installed, I'm gonna head back to the Epic Launcher. I'm gonna open up that major project. This is the one that I pared down to be really, really small. And I'm going to turn on source control now here. And I'm going to be very careful when I do this because I can, I can go really fast and not read all the things, but I need to be careful. Uh, very careful when I do this. For one very important reason, I need to choose Git Beta. I don't want to make the initial commit. I'm going to turn that off for very important reasons because we need to make a Git attributes file that's gonna enable Git LFS. And why is that grayed out? If anyone can let me know in the comments, I would love to know, but it's not currently enabled for this project. Um, so I initialize the project with Git and I accept the settings. It says it's adding the files to source control now, theoretically, when I head back over to Git Desktop, I should be able to add that now as a repository. So I just need to, in this tool here, add an existing repository because it was just created. So I choose the path to major project, open it up and hit add repository. Now, there was not a commit made. And what's really important to look at is the history. If you see that there's already a history here, this is not gonna go well. That is why we did not want to commit. It's really important not to do that first commit because we don't wanna have the large files already in history before we do the next move. So we've got Git LFS installed to our computer, but we don't have it installed to this repository. So under repository, you can open in terminal for Mac, or you can open in git bash for PC. And then you can just type in git LFS install. And now it says that LFS is initialized and ready to go. Now I've done some Googling. So we need to now start to track specific files. And I'm just gonna grab this code right off of the page that I'd found earlier. And now that I'm still in the same directory, it's really important that I'm sitting in that folder, I'm gonna tell it to start tracking certain files. Now the big baddies for Unreal are U asset files. I press return it's now tracking that file. Then I can say, maybe in my project I do have some .psds. Now the star means all files in all folders throughout the entire project. So star means all. So theoretically, and I do wanna just point out that I have this turned on, show all files. And I just Googled for how to access your Mac's hidden files in order to be able to see what just got generated back here when I, when I created that new repository in Unreal. And don't forget, I did not commit. I then on command line started adding lines of code to a file here called git attribute. Now you could say other, if you don't have this option to open it with text edit, you can say open with other text edit just to see what is currently being allowed to be uploaded as large files. So U asset files and PSD files. Now, FYI, I'm just gonna hop back into my project, go into my interactive forest folder, model textures. So if I go and look at this one normal map, and I can just right click on any of these and say that I wanna show it in Finder and then it will pop up behind the scenes and I got a command tab over to it and I can see the culprit that's gonna cause me problem. There you are. That's the 190 megabyte file that's gonna make this whole thing fail if I don't have Git LFS a working. 
And what I wanted to point out there, show in Finder, is that it is not uh, a PNG file or something else you might expect. It is a U asset file. That's why it's so important on command line that we track U assets using git LFS. And if you're curious and you have show hidden files on, you can go back into your project, open up that git attributes file just to put your eyes on it. Now here's the trick. We need to get this onto GitHub first. Before we push everything else to the server, we need to get Git attributes onto the server first. So I can go back to GitHub desktop and I can see there's nothing in my history, very important, but there's all these changes. Now, if I just hit publish because I'm not thinking and I'm going really fast, I'm gonna get into trouble because that 190 megabyte file is gonna kill my initial push. So I need to, if this is gonna work, deselect everything and then just push git attributes to the server. This will be my initial commit. So I commit this to master. I publish the repository. I wanna make sure that I'm only pushing the one. Now in history, it should have one push. There it is, create the git. Now you gotta be absolutely sure that when you go for this next move that all of these are unchecked. Publish repository. Now it's gonna ask you what that name was. I'm gonna let people in the world see it and keep it private if you want and then publish the repository. Now in theory, this should happen really, really fast because it's only pushing up one file. And the server now knows, this is super important. The server now knows in this git attributes file, and this is up on the server, this is on git, that these files are allowed to go up, um, yeah, to the server. Now look, I spelled that wrong, so <laughs> that's funny. I might as well go back to my text edit. Let's be absolutely clear we get this going right. I'm gonna open it up with text edit. I'm gonna get rid of that line. I didn't even need it. I can save it. Now in theory, if I go back to GitHub desktop, it should say that, hey, this thing's changed. I'm not going to commit everything except this one file until I know it's perfect. I'm gonna update it and push it to origin. It's only one file, one tiny little text file. So I'm just being absolutely clear that this thing is gonna be just right. Git attributes, there we go. So PSD files and U assets um, are allowed to go up. And now I can check off everything else and commit this as my first commit of all files. Commit to master and go have dinner when you push the origin. So I'm gonna pause the video here and see what happens in probably an hour or so. And yeah, this is uh, gonna take a while. I just had dinner and this is no longer spinning, so all is right in my world. I head on over to GitHub, and I can see under major projects, et voila, all of my big files have gone up, including that 190 megabyte uh, monstrosity, which we're probably gonna watch this um, video in like 25 years and be like, what the heck? That's like nothing when we've got petabyte files uh, in our video games on our PlayStation 12s. But yeah, this was the big one, the Bark N asset. And it's 190 megs and it's online because I'm allowed to do that with Git LFS because of that hard work that I put into this good file here, the Git attributes file that I pushed first. That is the trick, ladies and gentlemen. Get this on the server first before you commit all of the rest of your files and everything should go well.
have yourself some happy world building.